And yet the service was beautiful because of all the gifts that people share with each other. And that's what Sunday is really about. So oh, I just love that. And you know, the name of my talk is the give and take. And this is, this is um, a room full of givers. And I really, really want to recognize that and say thank you to everyone um, in this room and also to people, even like Reverend Maureen, who's, who are going to be watching us on YouTube later on. So we have been talking about prosperity and abundance. And one reason why we decided this is the perfect time to do that is because whenever you turn on the news, if it's not about the war or the this or the that, it's about inflation and what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, not much has really happened except, you know, it's harder to find eggs on sale than it used to be. But still, there's a lot that comes in to our frame of reference that is kind of negative about the idea of prosperity. And so Reverend and Maureen and I thought this was the perfect time to really talk about abundance and prosperity. And the thing to stay aware of is that everything we say about prosperity is not limited to money at all. You see, abundant living, the life abundant, is not just about money or finances. It's about living a good, healthy, happy life, having what you want. So the things that we talk about today are true for all aspects of our living. It's not just narrow. Because when you say prosperity, it's like, oh, that's so limited. You know, is that spiritual? Yes. We're only talking about spiritual principles. And spiritual principles are universal principles. They are broadly applicable to all facets of our life. So we're continuing today um, talking basically about some of the ideas in um, Eric Butterworth's book, Spiritual Economics. And Butterworth wrote this about what Jesus said. He said, Jesus clearly stated the divine law, give, and it will be given to you. Butterworth said, however, and this is the trick, he said, the divine flow requires but one thing of you. Your consent to be not a giving channel, but a receiving channel. See, that's the trick. In order to give, you have to receive. Okay, so here's the, here's the diagram for today, right? <laughs> It, does it look like a faucet? You know, I'm sorry it's not too big, but it's really big when I printed it on a piece of paper. See, it's like a water faucet. The water faucet must be open, right? You turn the crank, you open it. It must be open to the flow in order that the water must pour forth freely. But where does the water come from? When you open that little twisty thing on the top, it's not just that water comes out. You're also allowing water to come through the pipe in order to come out. And that's why in order to give, it's just a symbol or an idea. In order to give, you have to receive. Because I know that for some people, it's easier to give than receive, so um, they love to give. And other people, they love to receive, and then you have the idea of, you know, well, if you don't turn on the giving, nothing more is, is able to be received either, right? It's, it's got to be a flow. 
And so when we talk about living an abundant life, we're talking about getting into the flow, allowing the good of our life to flow through us in so many different ways. So when Jesus said, give and it will be given to you, Butterworth interpreted that to say that what we needed to do is get ourselves into a giving consciousness. So you could think of that little, uh, what do you call it? Spigot. Spigot, whatever. The thing on the top that you turn. I know there's Handle an exact name for it. Handle. <laughs> Handle. Handle. <laughs> Everyone's going to, okay, you all know what I mean. Right? <laughs> uh, twisty thing. Yes. That's the only thing you really control, is how much are you going to open it. So that represents, in a way, your giving consciousness. Is it wide open, or is it just dribbling, drizzling through, drip by drip? So getting into the giving consciousness is opening that valve. There you go, valve, so that there's a more sustained flow of good into our lives. Good of all kinds. Not simply money, but a giving consciousness that can unfold in so many different ways. And Butterworth actually said, the most important thing we need to do is to think give. To say to ourselves, I will think give today. I will think, give, every day of my life. And this is just an example of um, how we can open up the flow of abundance into our lives. So it's not a matter of just agreeing to be a giving channel, but also of being a receiving channel. You can't give until you receive just like you can't breathe out until you breathe in. Or just like if you think about it, um, you know, when a wheel goes around and around, part of it's going down and the other part is going up. There's just the give and take going on all the time, the up and down going up, on all the time. This is, this is really the cycle of life, the universal the spiral of life. Now, not being open to this flow, you could call, um, for us humans, we might call that a blockage or a congestion. And these are conditions that the founder of Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes, talked about quite a bit when he was instructing people on how to improve their lives or how to do spiritual healing, how to heal unwanted both physical and mental experiences. And in the back of his book, The Science of Mind, there's a healing meditation called No Congestion. And it goes like this. And this is something you would repeat. So if you have the book, you can look it up. There is no congestion or stoppage of action. Life flowing through me is perfect and clear. It cannot be stopped, retarded, or hindered. I feel the one life flowing through me now. And that is really the perfect description of having this, this giving consciousness, which is also a receiving consciousness. Because in order to be in the flow of life, and experience the greater abundance in all ways, we need to be more open. And that's what I wanted to show you, the picture, the idea of a faucet, to help each of us keep envisioning that giving does depend on receiving. Now if you stop and think for a moment about something in nature, like a tree, Let's take an apple tree, a growing plant. In order for the tree to give, it must take, right? And it does it naturally. It doesn't really have a choice. 
In order for the tree to make apples, to make oxygen, to make its roots grow strong, to um, hold the soil together with its roots, to create an environment for birds and, and bees, to create shade, all these things that it gives to the world, it must take in sunshine, water, and nutrients. It's the life cycle of the tree. It gives and it takes, and it doesn't have a choice. See, you don't plant an apple seed, and that apple seed pops up a little bit and then says, eh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be open to taking up water in my roots today. Oh, that's our special talent we have as humans. We get to do that. <laughs> We're special. We have a capacity for both self-awareness and also for choice. So a tree might be struggling because of its external conditions. Maybe it's a drought. But a human can struggle to thrive because of internal conditions as well as external conditions. Because we're actually always choosing whether consciously or unconsciously, whether or not we're going to be engaging fully in the give and take of life, or whether we're going to be holding back in some ways. I mean, I do it. I hold back sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, I have an idea that I want to share with somebody, but they might think I'm stupid, so I'm not going to say it. Or somebody might say, well, I'd really like to um, have this new shirt, but it's too expensive, so I don't think I can afford it. I'm not going to do it. Or someone might say, I'm not going to um, go to the doctor because they might tell me there's something wrong with me, so I'm not going to do it. There's just, I'm just trying to say there's a lot of different wild ways in which we can hold back from our good. Um, and that are not just about money. They can be just in, in, in all kinds of things. And, and it's, when I was thinking about how to explain this, it's, it's confusing. Because on the one hand, we say prosperity is about being willing to have more in your life. And then at the same time, we're saying, well, no, prosperity is not about increasing your ability to have more. It's about expanding your consciousness, about being grateful and open to having more. It, it, you know, it's a little bit of a, um, you know, it's kind of like a Buddhist koan where, you, you know, what's the sound of one hand clapping? Well, it depends. What is it clapping against? I don't know. But <laughs> what we're saying today, everyone should have a giving consciousness. But in order to have a giving consciousness, you also have to have this receiving consciousness. And that's kind of contradictory, and that's why it's so good to think about these things in nature that we can see that do that, like the wheel or the apple tree. They both give and receive. It creates role models or things that we can hold on to and use it as examples in our mind to make it easier for us to accept. I'm sure that every single person in this room can remember a time when someone said, would you like me to help you? And you said, no. Martha asked me today, did I need help getting some boxes out of the back of my car? What did I say? No. <laughs> Why? Why did I say no? I had two boxes to get out, you know, and I made two trips, and she was offering to make one of the trips, but I said no. Okay, so, you know, do as I say, not as I do. That's right. No, we're all learning. We're all bit by bit trying to get a little bit better at this opening up to life. So, um, so Butterworth, even talking about in the same way, I guess he found it confusing too, in a way, to explain it. So he wrote in his own book about 
his own book. He wrote, in a book devoted to the theme of prosperity, it might be assumed that the emphasis would be on how to get. Perhaps by now you will understand why we say that such an emphasis is not only grossly materialistic, but is also extremely misleading. Any study of prosperity fails unless it teaches you how and why to give. So it's like the same thing in reverse. You can't get unless you give. Just like you can't give unless you get. He says giving does not refer simply to money. It's a process. It may involve money, but it also involves the many ways in which you contact life. Giving, he says, giving is basically an attitude. Giving is an attitude with which you touch things. It's your attitude that you have when you interact with life. In fact, he says, you know, don't, a lot of people are misled because they think of giving as, um, you know, you get all these mailers and emails and spam things, please give, please donate, you know, and, and sometimes the word giving gets confused with the ideas of, I'm going to give in order to get. I'm going to give in order to get some kind of placard or thank you or, or um, a tax deduction. But that's not a giving consciousness. A giving consciousness is the consciousness of pouring out your light into the world. And as we pour out our light into the world, as we are more open to the sharing of all, all our different attributes and, and capabilities and talents, we are going to be fed by the universe in beautiful ways. You know, um, Butterworth also talked about materialism. I guess even though he wrote the book Spiritual Economics, he's kind of down on materialism, you know, and, and the idea and you hear this when people talk about prosperity teaching, that it's okay for people to go after whatever they want, no matter what the cost, in order to advance yourself. And, and what happens then is this creates kind of like, a, I mean, if you, think of, if you think of life as a flowing river, there are these eddies and backwashes and currents and whirlpools here and there, and, and some of this self-servingness by certain people, and you know, and I might sometimes be self-serving, who knows? They create these kind of currents that we need to stay away from. So today, for instance, we're all being bombarded with advertising all the time, everywhere you look, and especially in election season, you really notice it. But, you know, every time, and you know, I watch the news and they've got, oh gosh, medical advertising. It's like, oh, if only you take this drug, you'll be so, you'll be dancing around. You know, so what advertisers do and, uh, is they actually have done a lot of studies about how to trigger people's emotions so that they'll want to respond to whatever the ad is, right? Um, basically, it's like a scientific analysis of how to best manipulate people. I know you're all aware of it, and I know that what we do sometimes is because we can get so sick of it that we become skeptical. And it's good to have a certain amount of skepticism to protect ourselves. You know, we don't have to vote a certain way or buy a certain thing because of a certain ad. We need to make our own good, wise decisions. But sometimes when you become too skeptical, and that can cause, it can kind of overreact and it can rebound on us where where we protect ourselves to the point 
that it actually can result in a constriction or a congestion in our lives. We're so, we become almost cynical so that we're always saying no and we're always disbelieving. And that isn't healthy either. What's healthy is to be aware, and use good judgment to investigate and to make wise decisions. Because life, life is not a competition. Right? So sometimes this, this, I think that's where the idea of materialism goes wrong, is they get caught up in the idea of life as a, as a competition. It's not a competition. For instance, Ruth Ann brought the most beautiful flowers today. And when I saw them, I, I said, oh, those are beautiful. And they're just beautiful as they are. And no one said, oh, Ruth Ann, you should have used twice as many roses. <laughs> and no one said, oh, Ruth Ann, you should have done such and such that Pat did last time she brought flowers. No, life isn't a competition. Things exist as they are to be appreciated and treasured. These flowers are beautiful. They stand alone as as something that was a gift to us, to everyone who sees them. It stands alone, it's, it's perfect. The purpose of life is not acquisition. The purpose of life is unfoldment and personal development. Butterworth says this, and I think it's really important, he says, your life is God's gift to you, and what you do with it is your gift to God. Think about it that way. Your life is God's gift to you, and what you do with it is God, your gift to God. So when we say God, of course, we're not talking about some guy out there. We're talking about the universal spirit of life, the creative consciousness itself. So do you agree with that? So if you agree with that, then when you talk about giving, you see how giving is an idea of experiencing living itself as giving. Our livingness is actually our givingness. And Butterworth takes that, that Bible quote, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He says, no, 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 it's not about that at all. The point is that God so loved the world that he gave. Spirit is always giving, just like um, the earth, the water, the sun are always giving to the apple tree. Life is always giving to us, and we're a choice. And when we let go of the what's in it for me thinking and shift into let your light shine thinking, let my light, you know, let our light shine thinking, then we become synchronized. Then we become in harmony with life itself. So we're doing a little spiritual practice here. We're, we're doing um, the unexpected income program where people um, sign up for the program and agree that if they receive um, unexpected, unscheduled income that they were not counting on and didn't know about, then they will give 10% back to our center. And this is, a, this is a, nothing more than a spiritual exercise, a practice, something to practice. It's like training wheels. And it does use the principle of tithing, which is saying, as we receive, we take some part of what we receive and give it back to wherever we're spiritually fed. Um, 
because that is maybe invisible, right? I mean, it's not like it's not like you go to the grocer and you get a tomato or a bag of macaroni. So there's it's 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 uh, intangible. But there's nothing magic about that ten percent. I want to say that there's nothing magic about the ten percent. There's no there's no tit for tat. There's no magic formula. And that's also one of the reasons why I particularly like Eric Butterworth's book, Spiritual Economics. It's all about the principle of giving. It's all about the principle of receiving. And it's all about the principle of having and being grateful that you have. You know, so today, it's actually 40 days before Thanksgiving. And at our center, uh, like three years ago, before COVID, we always would do a 40 days of gratitude practice where um, we would pass out gratitude journals and encourage people to every day just write down 10 things or whatever um, in the gratitude journal. So we actually have some gratitude journals available today um, out in the bookstore, complimentary. Um, we also have, if you would prefer, because I know a few of you always are already doing gratitude lists. Um, we also have some blank journals if you want to, you know, do it that way instead of fill. So we have blank journals and we have fill in the blank journals that you can, you can help yourself to. Because the gratitude is kind of the key that blends everything together when we talk about abundant living. Gratitude helps us be conscious and open our consciousness to acknowledging and noticing every time that you hear any of us do a spiritual mind treatment up here. If you listen, you'll always notice that at the end of the treatment, we say, thank you, spirit, or something along that. And the reason is that that is the recognition that it is already done. So I'm going to suggest that when you do your gratitude list, consider being grateful for something which you have not yet manifested, that you have not yet experienced something that is in your ideal, your dream of living. That's what we do when we do a treatment. We move from a recognition of what's going on outside affecting us to a recognition of how our innermost thinking, our personal consciousness, can affect our outward conditions. So today is the day to receive, to give, to have, and be grateful and I'm so grateful to be here today. I'm so grateful that Pat is having a birthday today because um, you know and isn't it funny that she's having a birthday and sharing with us that she's turned that birthday into an opportunity for giving and that is a beautiful um, expression of life at its best. So thank you everyone.